Hello there, welcome. My name is Grace and today I'm going to be discussing all of the books that I read in November. I completely failed my November TBR. Um, we're also trying out a new hairstyle today. So let's get right into it. So if you watched my last wrap up, you would know that I finally finished the Twilight series. And after I finished Eclipse, I was kind of confused because I was wondering where like Victoria and Riley and like the whole like um, newborn army came into play because they had that in the movie, but then in Eclipse, the novel, it's not featured. And then I remembered that, hello, can I pick it up? That there is the second life of Brie Tanner. So I picked this up and I was excited for it because I was like, ooh, finally like the piece that I've been missing from this story that I really enjoyed a lot watching the movies like growing up. So I picked this up this book <laughs> was so boring the first half I it was literally so boring that I would rather like go out foraging for rocks put them in a bowl top them with some Caesar dressing and chew on them for fun that would have been more fun and I mean that wholeheartedly I'm not even joking in the first half of this book I did not care at all boring it's like a bunch of newborn vampires cowering in a house somewhere and Riley sometimes walks in and like rips people's limbs off and that sounds exciting but it doesn't at all so I gave it three stars because the end did pick up because the Voltoria obviously are coming and the Cullens spare Brie and you get to see Edward and the whole Cullen family through her eyes so she's like a third party outsider right she doesn't have any stake in the matter besides wanting to live but at the same time like she gets to see Edward where we don't get to see him do you know what I'm saying like we don't ever get to see well I mean we get Jacob but like Jacob's perspective of Edward and Bella is very biased obviously because he wanted to be with Bella up until regurgitation was born so I gave this three stars like I didn't hate it as much as I said I would rather chew on rocks than read it but the end didn't make it better but it wasn't bad like it wasn't a two-star rating do you know what I'm saying so like it's very low but it's not horrible so yeah those are my thoughts <laughs> so much fun I had A Million Junes by Emily Henry so Delaney and Kaylee forced me to read this and to like it or else our friendship was basically on the line. So I went into this really hoping it would be good and it was, it was really good. It was my first Emily Henry book. I gave it four stars because I did find myself getting lost in the plot a little bit and, but it was really good, um, hit me right in the feels. If you have issues with your dad or like with your parents, this might hit hard. Um, if you liked Saving Mr. Banks and the story of like P.L. Travers and Disney trying to get the rights to make Mary Poppins the movie, you, if you couldn't, if, if you couldn't watch that movie without crying, you won't be able to read this without crying. Um, so I sobbed. I actually have a photo of me towards the end because I was like oh this was so good like I really liked it and I took a photo of me with like one glistening tear and I like sent it to the group chat and then the it got worse at the end well like happy and sad all you know like all of those feelings like it was wrapping up really nicely and I was just crying and so then I was like absolutely I was red in the face I was like absolutely sobbing snot running down my from my nose you know and I took another photo so I might insert those here for your viewing pleasure this was really good. And now I really want to read Emily Henry's other books, but I'm terrified for my <laughs> emotional state. But I'm excited at the same time. I'm excited to hurt myself. And I don't know what that tells you about me as a person and the inner workings of my mind. But um, yeah, that's it. You should pick this up. It was good. It was good. Sad, but good. Good and sad. Believe me, I gave this five stars. Um, spoiler warning for maybe potentially the entire Shatter Me series. So if you haven't read the series, obviously don't listen to these spoilers. 
if you've even if you read the first three books and then you didn't continue with the series after it like started to continue like years later um don't like listen to what i'm saying um this is a novella from warner's point of view point of view after the sixth and final book so do without what you will um okay now that we've got that out of the way this was so sweet i cried i love them um warnet okay warnet wedding stunning i love them we get to see warner's mind and we've got that a little bit before but now you get to see him with anxiety and because i have like severe anxiety i was like i feel you i feel you i get it i get it warner and i i enjoyed reading about it but i obviously didn't enjoy reading about it and like seeing him suffer that obviously wasn't fun but juliet helps him out everybody helps him out um he gets a puppy and it's like he's like ew disgusting I have feelings for this tiny, disgusting, scraggly creature. I guess you can stay. <laughs> oh, I love him. I love him so much. He's, he will always be like my favorite. Um, we've got Kenji crying. We've got everybody crying. Um, stunning. I loved it. I want more. I'm going to reread the whole Shatter Me series at some point because I need it. It means so much to me. I read it at like a very important place in my life and I really want to get those feelings again like you know all the way through the end from beginning to end I'm not making any sense Laura Olympus so I had seen some art for Laura Olympus for a long time and I wanted to read it so when I found out that there was going to be a physical copy coming out I was like I'll hold off and read it when it comes out and then it got pushed back and then it got delivered so okay overall I give Laura Olympus four stars right now maybe even 4.5 stars as a whole so because I continued after I read this I continued reading it on like the webtoon app but for this novel I'm giving it three stars and in order to explain why, I'm going to put up a trigger warning. So there is some S-A-S-S-H um, type things that I'm going to discuss. So if that will bother you, like click off now. The reason why I gave this three, three stars is because everything is good until the end. And where this book ends, like the physical copy ends, is with... Um, Apollo, R wording, Persephone. And then it's like a completely, like maybe a throwaway chapter about Hades, like when he was younger, and then the book is over, like it ends. So you see Persephone like having a mental breakdown after like what has just happened, and then the book ends. I wouldn't have chosen to end it there. I get that it's a cliffhanger. However, I don't appreciate this um, very touchy subject and harmful subject to others, right? Triggering that it like was used as a plot device to sell the sequel potentially because it's free online. So people are like already, it's very popular. It's already, you know, very people are, there's a lot of public interest is what I'm trying to say. So I don't think it's like the author or the artist's fault I don't think. I think maybe it was the publisher like deciding how much to publish in the first volume, maybe. Um, I, I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking. So yes, but no. So yes, but also no. And I'm sending this copy to Delaney because I don't know, I just, I wanted rid of it and I'll just continue online. And if I want to buy it again in the future, I'll just pick it back up because whatever, but. Gilded by Marissa Meyer. So if you know me, you know that I'm a huge Marissa Meyer fan and I read everything that she's written. And when I found out that this was coming out and it was a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, I was like, ooh, exciting because I've never read a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. And then I read it, four stars, stunning, like everything else she's ever written. The Lunar Chronicles is still my favorite, but well, 
I did love Renegades. This was so cute. I was wondering how like the actual lore of Rumpelstiltskin would be changed and also how it would be used in this. And I think it was like super unique um, from what I know anyway, other fairy tales that I've read. It was, I don't know, it felt like the most grim, like grim brothers, not like the word, like, you know, the adjective grim. Um, but yeah, this was good. I want the sequel. I thought it was a standalone and it is a duology, I think. And now I am sad because I liked it. And I thought, ooh, there's like 65 pages left. This will wrap up. And then banger after banger after cliffhanger. And now I am sad. So I respectfully request the sequel in my hands right now at this moment. Gimme, gimme. And then, you know, I won't lose my mind. The Darkness Outside Us. So I was excited for this because I heard it was gay, it was space, it was like whatever, which didn't make any sense. Well, I love gay romance and just gays in general. Any gay, I'm here for it. Anyway, so I was like, ew, like space is my thing that I just cannot get behind. I, I don't know, like I can't visualize it. It's also a big fear of mine to be like trapped in space, which will not happen. So it's kind of irrational, but at the same time, it's a real fear and I don't want to think about it. And this book does kind of, things in this book happen that are literally my fears. So why did I think this would be a good fit for me? It wasn't bad by any means. I just don't like space. It was good. It just wasn't for me, but everything besides the space aspect I liked. It was great. So like three stars, 3.5 stars. It was good. I liked it. The cover's also gorgeous. The love hypothesis. Y'all, I ate the shit up. It made me cry. It made me laugh. It made me fangirl. It gave me feelings spicy feeling. I loved it. I loved it so much. Four stars. It wasn't perfect. Where it lost me was the smart people talk. That's where I was like, I'm not understanding what you're saying. I don't understand science. But yeah. Mm. So, okay. This book was so cute. I loved it. I get me an Adam, get me an Olive. Both of them, I need them. I volunteer. Can I be a third wheel? Can I just sit? Oh, I tapped this by the way. Can I just sit and like stare at them both in a non creepy way, in like an admiration kind of let me serve you? You know what I'll do? I'll get a job at the Starbucks on campus. That's what I'll do. <laughs> I sound like the biggest stalker. Long story short, I loved this. Um, the hype is real. Don't get distracted by like the adult speak or the science speak, but it's good. And I love the friendships and the relationships. And I felt for them both. Like I loved them both individually also, I love them together. So that's another thing that did it for me. <sighs> I love them so much. I kind of want to reread re this now. Iron Widow. So I read this with official hijabi reader underscore on Instagram. I'll insert a picture of her here. But we both expected to like this book, okay? This book blew my mind five stars a million stars 10 out of 10 would bang i love this book and i cannot pronounce any of the names thank you to the audiobook so like i can hear them in my head but like physically i will embarrass myself if i try to verbally say them out loud so 
bear with me. Anywho, the main character, she's so badass. I love her. And I love the fact that, well, you know what? If anybody ever touches her, if anybody ever does her wrong or look at her in the wrong way, I'm coming for you. And I'm going to take your freaking kneecaps. Okay? I love them. I love them so much. There's an actual love triangle where everybody's in love with everybody. Okay? Gay rights. Huzzah. I love it so much. I have a full review on Goodreads of my notes. And then I'm going to write like an actual review later on. But, oh my god. This needs to be hyped more okay so i will do the hyping i love it i love everybody i need the next book i this book it put me in a reading slump like i loved it so much and i wish i could do it justice by saying the names and pronouncing everything correctly but i i really will cry um because i can't i tried and it, it wasn't good it wasn't good and I believe myself. <laughs> so anyway, pick this up, get the audiobook. It's great. The narrator did a phenomenal job. The author did a phenomenal job. I watched her, um, her YouTube videos. I really, really like them. I watched her, um, like historical accuracy and just her commentaries on Mulan and Mulan 2, like the animated Disney movies. Um, loved those there was so much information and it was great because like a lot of the information that I like read in the book I had watched her talk about on in those videos so that was really fun um anyway my nerd is showing I just I loved it so much so pick this up it was so 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 good oh my gosh yeah <laughs> I also read four arcs this month and they were e-arcs so I don't have physical copies so I will put a picture of each of the covers here. First up we have The Language of Flowers. This is a cute little story about a bumblebee who is asked to be a messenger between all of the flowers in the garden and in doing so she you know spreads the pollen and then more flowers pop up and so then she's the only bumblebee and the only messenger in the garden and so one day she decides to go in search of other bumblebees to come back and be messengers and for all of her friends and it's really cute because it talks about like what each flower means and like if you send a flower to somebody like how if you send um a tulip to somebody it means that it's like a declaration of love and like etc which I've always found super fascinating I love things like that um like the symbolism of animals and like um the flowers and colors and like all that kind of sort of stuff I live for that so this was perfect I gave it four stars because the ending kind of was like iffy I feel like it just was like well that's the end kid and it kind of literally said that um but it was good I really liked it the temperature of me and you so this was the first novel that I have gotten as like an e-arc that I've actually had the chance to sit down and read and I loved it so much it was so sweet I laughed so many times and I really wish I had a physical copy, like a physical arc or just the physical copy already in my hands because I like bookmarked on the NetGalley app how many times I laughed and I loved it so much. It was such a good story. I loved all of the characters. I loved all of the romances. I loved the friendships. They were so good. Like it was a, it was a very good depiction of like how teenagers can like do things that necessarily like are kind of on the verge of not okay, like drinking alcohol, you know what I'm saying? But then they do things that are like paint by numbers together, you know what I'm saying? There's just so many good friendships. I loved it so much. And there was enough sci-fi slash magic that really balanced out the contemporary for me. So it was so good. I can't wait till it comes out in January because I'm going to get a physical copy. I loved it so much. Um, ugh, I wish I could just like implant all the cute things into your heads because it was so cute. Ugh, Jordan. Okay, they were really pulling on my heartstrings because they were just so lonely. Like they had good friendships while well, Dylan had good friendships. But then when he meets Jordan and he like finally sees somebody who like mirrors his loneliness, right? Because he like, they both 
have never had like a romantic relationship with a guy before and so they're like starting to have feelings for each other and it's just so sweet and they both don't want to mess anything up and it's so wholesome and sweet and i love it so much i love it so much anyway pick this up when it comes out i loved it full send ah. also it really made me want dairy queen and i'm lactose intolerant so that's not really good but well i could get something else i don't have to get ice cream but if you know you know from like the first chapter so like i really want a blizzard i really want to go to dairy queen then we have the secret garden graphic novel and i've never read the actual novel i actually tried to with the um audiobook but i couldn't get into it because of the racism like it just kept throwing me off how racist it was and I, I never knew it to be racist. I saw the movie when I was little as like a really little kid, like before I was like maybe six or seven. So I was just like, oh, you know, a secret garden and I, the racism just went right over my head. And so reading the book, I was like, is this the N word? Like, are we doing this right now? Are we like saying this? Are we being like super racist to Indian people? Um, I guess we're doing this and it was just, it just turned me off completely and so I stopped reading. And so I was like, hmm, maybe this will be better because I saw that it was also marketed towards children. So they did completely take out the racism, which I agree with and disagree with because I feel like the removal of the racism from the story erases that it happened and that we need to talk about it so that we can learn to be better, right? But at the same time, it's like you don't want to have racist depictions of people or cultures or and promote that to children so i'm kind of conflicted on that but the story was great um it didn't tell me when i requested it that it was the first volume so it ends in the middle of the story from where i remember it and so i assume there's going to be a second volume sometime but since this is an arc and it hasn't even published yet i don't even know when the second book will be or the second volume will come out but i would like to read it I gave it four stars overall. Um, I also noticed that apparently like Mary or the main character, the little girl is like a huge bitch in the movie and the actual novel. But in this, they just, they made her nicer, quicker, maybe to save page time and, you know, panels. So I liked that better because I feel like it made her more childlike instead of uh, an adult's depiction of a bratty child it's like oh it's this is an actual depiction of a child who's literally lost everything and who was raised to be racist and unkind and who now has a chance to learn and grow and be better and find joy and friendship and it was it was good so four stars the whale library so when i requested this i thought it was going to be a book about like a fisherman who makes friends with a whale who has like a whole library of books in her stomach and it is but at the same time it's also misogynistic and sexual like there's nudity like male complete male and complete female nudity which was just it came, literally came out of nowhere um i don't think the story flowed well at all together it would be like the fisherman or the the male he was a male carrier on the ocean so he would you know go on in his boat he would go into the whale and you know be in the library with like a bunch of sea creatures and then it would be like him picking up a book and then the literal next page would be his wife laying on the ground in their house thinking about how if she doesn't love this baby enough and she like doesn't promise make it promises that it'll drift away forever meaning miscarriage like if the mom it'll be the mom's fault if she has a miscarriage because she didn't love the baby enough and make it enough promises that it would like want to be born so i don't really understand and there was kind of like the wife was giving the mail carrier a blowjob in the bathtub i don't know it was odd like i didn't care about the nudity at first I thought it was a children's novel and then apparently it's for adults, but then it's not like graphic. It was just like, oh, she's pregnant and she's in the bath and like, you know, you could see her boobs, which was fine. Cause I was like, I'm not gonna sexualize her boobs. This isn't a sexual setting. So I'm not gonna sexualize her body, right? But then there was like a, f uh, a pirate groping a mermaid's boobs. And then there was like full bush and then 
full male genitalia. And I was just really confused. And then the ending um, was horrific. Um, I am saddened. It will scar me for the rest of my life. I no longer want to get attached to anything because I know that anything that I ever like ever will be taken away from me. So do I recommend this? No. Two stars. Yay. The one thing I liked about the story, yeeted. We gotta love that, don't we? Those are all the books that I read this month. Those are all my thoughts. If you've read any of these, please let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I'd really love to chat about any of these books. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi y'all. It's me, Grace. I'm out of breath. Oh shit.